Hello everyone, welcome to part five of uh, scope planning and I'm going to speak now about the WBS dictionary. So before we get started, WBS, it stands for work breakdown structure and the WBS dictionary is basically a document that will provide you all the detailed deliverables, activity and scheduling information for each component of the WBS. So this is something, this is one of the major documents of scope baseline and of scope planning. And to be honest, it's the major document that you will create when it comes to planning your work. So it's structured as a table or as a spreadsheet where each row is a different task and each column is an information about that task. The component of the lines of the WBS dictionary is simple because it's all the tasks you're going to break down into, but the columns is a little bit more, more I would say, ambiguous, actually, because you need to choose the columns that will help you plan the project. And you should have at least one column that describes scope, one column that describes schedule, and one column that describes the resources. And there's many possible columns. So for example, you have the identifier. The identifier is a number or a code that you give to each task. You're not going to repeat the name of the task all the time. So rather you might say task one, task two, task three, task four, and so on. Uh, number two is deliverable. Now deliverable is basically what might come out of that task. Maybe a report, maybe a test, maybe a, 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 any document, maybe a prototype. Not all tasks will have deliverables, but sometimes we define them when we need to make sure that something comes out of the task. Then we have task description, uh, which basically describes what is the work that must be done in that task. Uh, quality requirements, so at what quality we want to reach, for example. Um, we could work on a task in, indefinitely and keep on improving the quality. So a lot of times we also have to define when to stop. Start date of the task and date of the task, the duration of the task, what department is responsible for that task. Um, Who's the task responsible or the task leader? How many hours of effort am I supposed to invest in that task? Uh, what's the current status of that task? What links does this task have with others? What risks does this task have? So this is just some examples, but the columns you really can adapt to what the reality of your project is. And I'm just going to give an example of the normal columns that I use on my project. So for my projects, I always put the identifier. Uh, I put a, a face, okay, the face. So for example, in this case, I'm uh, once again, the example of the of building a deck, I have my phase one, which is the design of the deck. And then on the second column, I describe my tasks. In this case, I have, okay, choose the layout, um, measure the land, meet with the customer, for example. On the duration, I typically divide my tasks by days, not by hours. Some people divide it by hours. And for me, that's, that's too much detail, but I'll speak about that in a little bit. So I, I defined it by days here. So for example, to choose the layout, I need one hour uh, to measure the land. I need, uh, sorry, one day to measure the land. I need two days to meet the customer. I need two days. I know the example is a little bit ridiculous, but again, it's just an example. So task two, all right, identifier two or task two, uh, they, they belong task two, three, and four. They belong to phase one and phase one, it's the idea is number one. Okay. So these three tasks, basically, I can only start each one after uh, I finish the previous one. So in this case, if you notice, uh, task two, I started it on the 1st of July. It lasts one day, so I finish it on the 2nd of July. That means I can start task three on the 2nd of July. It lasts for two days, so it goes until the 4th of July. 4th of July, I start uh, task four. Task four lasts for two days, so it lasts until the 6th of July. So the next, and I have this start and end dates really help. So if you notice, duration, start date, and date is about schedule. Predecessor, this is what task must I complete before I can start this task. So for example, I can only do task three if first I finish task two. I can only do task four if first I finish task three. Now, in this case, I only placed one predecessor, but sometimes I have more. Then I put the task leader, in this case task leader, I put myself as the, the task leader for all of them, but you might have different people. And then I put the status, okay, which tasks are completed, which tasks are in progress. Normally, if I did not start a task yet, I just don't write anything. Um, and this is the typical layout I have. Now here I'm giving you four lines, but even a simple project would have hundreds of different lines because you want to break it down um, into at least daily tasks, in my opinion. 
So to summarize, the work breakdown structure is one of the most important documents we have in scope planning because it's the document that we're going to use to manage our projects every day. And I have to say it really is a useful a useful table because it really allows you to know okay what tasks have been completed what do i need to do f uh, next what are the things that i need to do today and this really brings you a lot of focus into your work thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you on the next video of this mini series